it should be pretty routine at this point. It just keeps happening, bro. I just recorded all the topics for today's Flimlo 5 video. And it's dope because we actually have all real football topics, man. The playoffs going crazy, Super Bowl predictions, national championship, real football topics. But then I finish it up, I turn the camera off, I go check Twitter that I was just on right before I press record. And in between the time that I'm recording the video, Antonio Brown breaks the internet bro anyway i decided that i'm not gonna bump out any of the actual topics that we have today so i dropped a standalone video yesterday on antonio brown if you have not seen it yet just consider it the flimlo 5 bonus video or bonus topic topic number six however you want to look at and even though i had to separate it and put it in a bonus video the streak continues whoa what's good my name is flimlo raps i want to welcome y'all to the flimlo 5 this is a show where I answer five football questions, all coming from you, the fans. Today we got a hell of a show with the main topics being the national championship game and my NFL playoff reaction slash predictions. This is one of the more interesting playoff runs that we've had in a while. We're also briefly gonna discuss whether or not Derrick Henry changes the way NFL teams value running backs, how I feel about Lamar Jackson after another playoff loss, and we're also gonna discuss the new XFL marketing campaign and a potential new XFL video game. All right, today we're gonna change it up just a little bit. The first three questions are gonna be quick, kind of more rapid style answers, and then we'll get into our main topics, which is gonna be questions four and five, which are gonna last a little bit longer because they're really like three or four questions all in one. Yo, remember, if you enjoyed this show and you wanted to stick around, click the thumbs up button and share this with your partners. If you're brand new, consider subscribing. We drop this show every Tuesday and I have a new What Happened To video every single Thursday throughout the month of January. And finally, we address the OG subs, notification gang, what's good, fellas? Y'all already know what to do, man. Kill the wang. All right, real quick, before we jump into today's video, I gotta give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, SeatGeek. If you're unfamiliar with the SeatGeek app, basically it aggregates tickets from all over the internet with the sole purpose of simplifying the ticket buying process. That's the whole point of the app. A green deal is good, a red deal is bad. The dopest thing about the app is that it's a one-stop shop for any live event. We talking concerts, sporting events, whatever. They give you all the information that you need to be able to make an informed purchase right at a glance. If you wanna download the SeatGeek app, all you gotta do, click the link in the description and don't forget to use my code FLIMLO. That'll get you $20 off your first purchase. Let's get it. All right, let's jump into question number one. Question number one comes from John Mendoza. John asks, does Derrick Henry's record-setting playoff run help reinforce the importance of the running back position on NFL rosters and in the draft? Hashtag the Flimlo 5. By the way, if you want to send in your own questions, make sure you're following me either on Twitter or on Instagram because that's where I take all these questions from. So basically his question is, will Derrick Henry's run change the way teams are treating running backs? We all know running backs have been getting treated pretty damn bad over the past few years especially. Will this change the way NFL teams look at them? Potentially yes, but I think this game versus the Chiefs is the ultimate test for the running back renaissance. It's interesting because we see Derrick Henry dominate in one way, then we see Patrick Mahomes dominate in a completely different way. And Mahomes with the crazy passing attack is actually more of the conventional football, I guess in 2020 at least. So if the run heavy Titans can actually get past the pass happy Chiefs, that's a huge win for running backs everywhere because it would prove that you can still win without having that star quarterback. Even if it's just close and Henry gets off but still loses, that's still a positive mark for running backs. But if the Titans go out there and get completely outpaced, I don't think it's gonna move the needle for running backs. I know Derrick Henry has pretty much gotten off of the whole second half of this season and been balling in the playoffs. But if the Titans don't have a good showing versus the Chiefs, I think a lot of NFL coaches and GMs are gonna just default back to the way that they were looking at running backs before Derrick Henry started just beasting out. With that said, I do think he's gonna get off and I do think that's gonna raise the priority for running backs 
once again and that's good bro because them dudes been getting messed over and quite frankly i'm kind of sick of it all right moving on to question number two this one comes from instagram njc24 What's your opinion on Lamar Jackson after another playoff loss? My opinion on Lamar after another playoff loss is simple. He's a second year quarterback, okay? I might actually have a different perspective of this than a lot of people because I'm a Bengals fan, right? As a Bengals fan, I know firsthand Every time I say something bad about Andy Dalton, people jump on me. There's people who still love Andy Dalton, who insist that he is a really good quarterback and above average quarterback. And check it out, he's had some really good regular seasons. Well, he's never had an MVP regular season. Lamar Jackson has. Dalton has been to the playoffs four times. He lost every single one of them. And not only did he lose them, he's never had a game as good as Lamar's bad game versus the Titans this past weekend. So if Andy Dalton can get a pass being a 10 year veteran with four playoff losses and people still hold him up as a good quarterback, and don't give me that whole, oh, the Bengals was trash. No, them playoff years, our teams were stacked. And at the very least, we should have got out the first round. So if y'all gonna give a pass to Andy Dalton, you gotta lighten up on Lamar. Again, second year player making second year player mistakes in that game. Now check it out. He had 500 total yards. I don't care about that at all. He played a bad game as far as I'm concerned. I sit there and watch the whole game. He didn't make the plays he needed to make. He made bad decisions. He started pressing late. Poor ball placement on a lot of those passes. Mark Andrews should have caught that pass, but it could have been easier had Lamar thrown the ball better. So I ain't making excuses. I ain't saying he played well. He did not. He played bad. My point is, let's give him a few more years the same way we do every other quarterback before you just start judging him and saying that he trashed in the playoffs or that, you know, he's already hit his ceiling. He made a huge leap from year one to year two. And I think that over the next few years, he's gonna take another step. He'll become more experienced, more seasoned. You gotta remember, second year player, 23 years old, give him some time. Question number three, let's get it. All right, question number three comes from the Wrench01 over on Twitter. XFL might be negotiating a video game deal. What would your immediate reaction be if this turned out to be true? And do you think both the game and the league will last long? So the XFL kicked off their national marketing campaign last night and they grabbed up Joel Klatt. That, in my opinion, is a great move, man. Joel Klatt, obviously high profile, well respected in the college football ranks, and he's been around for a while now, but still seems fresh and new. So I really love that choice. I think it's great that they was able to land him. The commercial was solid. It was well-timed. Joel's pitch for the league was perfect, I thought. Not begging people or trying to impress them with over-the-top antics, but just sounding super confident, bro. A nice delivery, making the XFL seem legit, man. I loved it. I'm also expecting something big when the Super Bowl rolls around. They're gonna wanna cast that net to try to catch all the stragglers who are gonna be left without football after the super bowl ends as far as the video game goes um if you watch sports gaming online's video the other day i thought they kind of dropped it at a weird time you know what i'm saying like it dropped at the same time that the playoffs was going on so i'm not sure how many people saw it but basically they said that there is an xfl game in the works they didn't say which developer because that hasn't been confirmed but it's said to be a big developer okay they kind of speculated that it's probably 2k because the nfl is likely not gonna let ea double dip they got that exclusivity deal over there so if the nfl got to be exclusive to ea then ea is probably gonna have to be exclusive to the nfl so if the game is made by 2k that could be really really dope and it could be something but again we're talking 2021 or 2022 for a release date with that now they were saying that the video game contract is actually contingent on the xfl making it through one full season and renewing for that second year they're leery from what happened with the aaf so the second part of the question is do i think either one of them will last long well first off the game is only coming if the xfl can at least make it out of one season so that's one thing do i think the xfl makes it out yeah i do bro everything i'm reading tells me that oliver luck the ceo of the xfl he talks about it he talks about how Vince McMahon has all these assets and everything set up so that this league can succeed. And they got enough capital. They got these nice commercials on Fox. 
they looking pretty good. You hear players talking about the facilities versus when they were with the AAF, they was working out at LA Fitness. So yeah, I'm excited for the prospects of each. And an XFL game could be pretty dope from a team building standpoint, because the way you build XFL teams is pretty damn interesting, right? You're taking these NFL rejects, you're taking college football rejects, guys from overseas, like it's not so cut and dry like the NFL is, and that could create something very interesting in a video game. So looking forward to it, but it's like way in the back of my mind because again, we're talking like two, three years down the line. Oh, last thing I wanna say about the XFL, I do wanna discuss the XFL rules and my thoughts on it. I'm gonna have to do a whole video on that after the NFL playoffs are over because it's just a lot and I really can't fit it in this Flimlo 5 videos and I don't wanna rush through it. So I do still plan to do that. It'll be after the Super Bowl and before the XFL season kicks off. All right, question number four in our first main topic of the day. Oh, that's Jay from Instagram simply said, Super Bowl predictions. Okay, this is kind of where the show actually starts. Let's jump in. So last week I went two and two with my playoff predictions. I was at 500. I got the 49ers and the Packers picks correct. So I did pretty good in the NFC. My excuse for dropping both of the AFC games, who the hell knows what's gonna happen in the AFC now that the Patriots have lost. Julian Edelman might even test out his vertical on the hood of your car. And if it wasn't so much actual big time football being played, I would really talk about that Julian Edelman thing, but maybe next week, I'm sure more information will continue to come out. Now, I knew the Texans would be a long shot, but I wanted to pick at least one underdog. You wanna pick four favorites to win. So I went with the hometown team, Deshaun's my dude. I rock with the Texans. They got up 24, lost by 20 crazy what are my thoughts on that i knew that lead would evaporate i did not expect them to also lose by 20 bill o'brien should be fired yes everybody's talked about it so i didn't even want to make it a topic because i don't have nothing to add just fire bill o'brien that's it all right now for my super bowl predictions i told y'all in the last two flim low fives that pass yards are overrated and if you missed those or forgot my reasoning is simple the top five passing yard leader in the NFL, none of them even made the playoffs, okay? Now Ryan Tannehill comes along and further proves my point by throwing for less than 100 yards in each of his first two playoff games and still managing to win. Now I picked against the Titans last week and my reason was because I assumed that Baltimore's offense from the regular season would translate to the playoffs. And despite how solid the Titans are, I thought that the Titans would get down a few scores and not be able to keep pace with the Ravens. But the Ravens came out flat and fell behind, putting Tennessee right into their wheelhouse of smacking you with Derrick Henry, Tannehill converting a couple third downs, and then hit you with the play action. We all know how the Titans rock at this point. With that said, I'm picking the Chiefs. <laughs> I'm picking the Chiefs because their playoff offense looked like the Ravens regular season offense in terms of explosiveness, okay? The Chiefs didn't operate at full strength pretty much all year. I know because Mahomes and Kelsey were meant to carry my fantasy team and trust me, they had a lot of off weeks due to injury and other things. But now that the playoffs have come around, they seem to be clicking on all cylinders. It was pretty obvious that the three week layoff hurt Baltimore and even though it was just one week, just a standard bye week, the off week seemed to affect the Chiefs. However, they was able to overcome that and now they've gotten it out of their system. So I'm expecting them to be on point from the jump versus the Titans. Now I already know the Titans won the regular season matchup. Please don't spam my comment section with that. I'm fully aware. I'm also aware that Houston beat the Chiefs in the regular season and they just lost by 20. So I don't care about the regular season. Not that I don't care about the regular season. I don't care what happened between these two teams in the regular season, bro. You gotta be careful on the internet. Cats will take what you say out of context. This is a fact. Now, just because I'm picking the Chiefs does not mean that I'm bagging on the Titans. The Titans have an opportunity to win this game. Of course they do. It's gonna come down to who can impose their will. Can the Titans make this an ugly smash mouth game? Or does the Chiefs high flying offense just take over, get that lead, and now the Titans can't catch up because they haven't passed for over 100 yards in one game during the entire playoff. I will say this, if the Chiefs start the game out like they started out versus Houston, it's a wrap. If the Titans mess around and go up a couple of possessions early, they might just be going to the Super Bowl. But I'm gonna predict that that does not happen. 
I got the Chiefs. All right, for the NFC, I picked both Green Bay and the 49ers to win their divisional round, and they both did. Now they face off. Now the 49ers famously passed on Aaron Rodgers and drafted Alex Smith, so you got that storyline working again, but I don't really care about that anymore. Listen, I really like the Packers because of the two Aarons. Those are my dude, Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. I rock with both of them, but they got problems, bruh. Aaron Jones was solid against the Seahawks, but he was held to only 62 yards on the ground. 49ers run defense is better than the Seahawks, bro. Doesn't mean that a Jizzle can't be effective on the ground, but it is something that concerns me. Also, Packers got Devontae Adams. Great, but he's the only reliable passing target that they have. Nobody else on the team outside of Jimmy Graham had more than one catch versus the Seahawks. That's a problem because the 49ers have Richard Sherman, who has been playing at a Pro Bowl level yet again. He's definitely going to offer more resistance than the Seahawks corners did versus Devontae Adams. So now, who is the other option that steps up for Aaron Rodgers? Also, the Packers defense was able to keep the Seahawks run game in check. The Seahawks running backs only combined for 46 total yards in that game. You really think the 49ers ain't gonna smack them with that two-headed monster and get a lot more than 46 yards? They will, bro. So what I'm saying is, the only way I see us getting that State Farm Super Bowl is if Green Bay is able to overcome all of that. And there's two things that have to happen in order for Green Bay to overcome all that stuff i just said the first thing is aaron jones and or jimmy graham gotta really step up in the pass game i think aaron jones might be limited a little bit in the run game but he could kill him in a pass game like he's done a lot throughout the regular season and the other thing is jimmy g is gonna have to have a healthy amount of turnovers in the game like he is sometime known to do but if those two things don't happen i don't really see the packers winning and to be clear i'm picking the 49ers so i got the 49ers versus the chiefs in the super bowl that's my pick all right finally question number five question number five is not even really a question but mojo over on twitter made the video by making the safe play he said, must recap the natty. I mean, you're gonna do it anyway, but you know. <laughs> and he's right, but I needed a question to be able to introduce the topic. So shout out to my dog, Mojo. Boom, let's get it. National Championship. Let's talk about it. So the National Championship just ended and I'm pretty damn tired from a long day, going crazy in the party chat and talking crap on Twitter. With that said, I gotta go ahead and apologize to y'all because I'm gonna talk about Joe Barrow for this whole segment, okay? Just be ready for that. But can you honestly blame me, bro? Can you honestly blame me? My team has the worst record in the NFL. We get the first overall pick, and then this man throws for 463 yards, six touchdowns, and no interceptions. Clemson had him on his heels at the beginning of the game with the blitz, and at one point they stopped blitzing, which was, I didn't understand at all. But even once they started back, Joe was able to adjust and he proceeded to just put his foot on their necks and never let up. I noticed that too when he dueled against Tua earlier this year. I kept thinking that Tua was gonna get back in the game because Tua was trying to press that button and, and turn it on. But Joe Burrow has that quality where he just does not let up. He doesn't tense up like most quarterbacks do when they get a lead. He just keep coming at you, bro, nonstop. The dude is just a dog, bro. There's no other way to put it. The pick is in, bro. It's over. Bengals got our quarterback of the future. 60 touchdowns on the year, raising the football family, Heisman Trophy winner, national championship winner, and he dominated every single step of the way. Trevor Lawrence is going to see better days, but he played poorly in this one. If you're a Clemson fan, you got to be able to admit that. I know y'all going to talk about that one touchdown that got called back. Even with that, Trevor missed a ton of throws. I mean, a ton of throws that if he would have just hit a few of those, it could have been a different game. I especially noticed a really big difference in Burrow and Lawrence on deep passes. Joe was money with just perfect placement on the majority of his deep throws. Trev missed almost all of his. And again, I'm not trying to dog Trev. I'm literally just telling you what happened. I've been watching Trevor Lawrence since Elite 11, man. I'm a fan as well. With that said, he's a lot younger than Joe. He's already got a championship under his belt. He's got more time to develop. So this will be a lesson for him. He'll come back better next year. Now, I thought we put to bed the Andy Dalton stuff, but no. Cats on Twitter are still trying to tell me how great Andy Dalton is, bro. My, I'm like my guy 
Tons of quarterbacks throw for three and 4,000 yards in today's NFL. The way the rules are, it happens, okay? We all know pass yards are hella overrated. Andy Dalton is 0-4 in the playoffs with one touchdown and six interceptions. When he was in college, he played for four years. In four bowl games, he threw for two touchdowns and four interceptions. Through two college football playoff games, Joe Burrow has scored 14 touchdowns with zero interceptions. He's thrown for nearly a thousand yards in two playoff games, bruh. 956 yards. These guys are not the same. People seem to think that if we don't win the Super Bowl next year, we shouldn't draft a quarterback. It's utterly ridiculous. We have a really good receiving core. Our offensive line was much, much improved late in the season. We're getting Jonah Williams back. Remember, we drafted him in the first round in 2019. The man did not play one game. He's coming back. And then of course, we're gonna have even more opportunities to further sure up the line that was much improved last year toward the end of the season. Anyway, man, the pick is in. It was a very fun game. In the end, LSU is too much. Congrats to them. Go Tigers. Now, I just need Zach Taylor to do the right thing. And I'm going to bed. <laughs> All right, man, that's the video. Thank y'all once again for tuning in. Once again, subscribe if you're brand new. Like the video if you like it. Brand new What Happened To video this Thursday. Make sure you got your notifications enabled so you don't miss it. My name is Flumlo Raps. I'm out of y'all next time, fellas. One. Yeah,